Children are so adaptable, like more so than you'd ever imagine. Just because you have a minor difference from somebody who's normal, actually I think that means that you should be more determined to do something. You just see how strong your kids are as well. Yeah, that's amazing. He's so fast, you can hardly catch him. When I first got the diagnosis, I felt scared and a bit worried, you know, knowing that your, your kid's got telopathy or club foot. Um, but then once I got the Ponsetti method explained to me, it was just sort of a bit of a sigh of relief almost, because, you know, there is something there. And after looking into it and finding out about it, you see how good and effective the Ponsetti method is. It's fixed my son's foot and my daughter's. So the Ponsetti method is a way of treating club foot that involves minimal surgery and there are uh, two main phases, the correction phase and the maintenance phase. Ponsetti is by far and away the best evidenced way of treating club foot. Uh, so this is uh, Amelie, and she's four weeks old now, five weeks old and she's uh, mum and dad's second child and uh, their first child was also born with a club foot. This is Toby, her brother. <laughs> Hello Toby. I'm having the same thing as you done. As you can see she's got a unilateral uh, right club foot. The left foot is completely normal with full range of movement. So the casting stage is the first part of the correction phase. We like to start treatment within the first six weeks of the baby's life. They'll attend the clinic, we will manipulate the foot to see where the foot easily comes to and then we'll apply a plaster cast maintaining that corrected position um, from toes to groin and that will stay on for typically one week and then the next week we'll take the cast off, re-manipulate the foot and change it. And each week the position of the foot improves a little more until the foot goes from facing inwards to facing outwards. In our experience, like getting used to it, I'd say we got used to it after, say, what, a month. When I saw that he, um, you know, he was fine, he was still the same baby with the cast on that he had been before the cast. And so, yeah, I was, I was relaxed by the time we went for the second casting. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> What is she doing to you? Oh. You're actually asleep, aren't you? <laughs> they help you get through it, if nothing else. Totally, yeah, yeah totally. like it's the other way around. Yeah, when, it's not you helping when, Whenever them. I thought, oh, God, I feel so sorry for him. He's but then smiling. he just starts smiling. It's like, yeah. oh, he's not liking what I'm worrying for. I've found so many people on social media who are incredible and who have the same disability and they won't let it stop them. If anything, they go out and they prove a point. I think it came about as a bit of a surprise when we realised uh, that I had telepies. As soon as I got my classification, it was a justification for being given the disability. It's an opportunity to, like I say, prove a point and make a difference. And I mean, how amazing would it be to represent your country? It'd be pretty cool, right? <laughs> it sounds really cliche, but I think it makes a person stronger. I genuinely do. I'd always been brought up in the kind of idea that tough and get on with it, and actually, I'm really grateful for it. Emily has had the first part of the Ponsetti treatment, which involves correcting her feet, gradually bringing them round with the casting into a more normal position. Yes. But the last stage of this involves the bringing the heel down and the foot up. And the, the problem with that is the Achilles tendon is generally quite tight. Yeah. And in most babies, they need to have a minor procedure which involves cutting the Achilles tendon. So this is a little foot model. And the Achilles tendon is right at the back. So you can feel it under the skin. And the procedure itself is called a percutaneous Achilles tenotomy and essentially that means just making a very small cut. We don't expose the whole 
uh, tendon and it sits inside a little sheath here which allows the tendon to grow back along the sheath. So by the time we take the cast off in two to three weeks time you can already feel that the tendon has grown back along that pathway. So that's essentially what we do. It doesn't require any stitches, we just put a little okay. butterfly stitch on the skin okay. and then we do the casting in the way that we normally do it each week. So how are you feeling today? Very nervous for her, even though I've done it before. What are you nervous, nervous about in particular? The crying. I think it's right that parents have concerns about tenotomy. It's a procedure on uh, their baby at a, a very early age, but it's a very safe procedure. It's been done all over the world. Thousands of tenotomies have been performed on children. I think the important thing is that the tenotomy is done well and it's done fully on the first time. It's more traumatic for you than it is for the babies because they won't remember it and it is done so quickly. Like now I'm nervous, but she's fine and afterwards she'll have forgotten all about it, but I'll still be traumatised, <laughs> so yeah. Most of our parents are thinking about Achilles tendon rupture in, in adults, which is a traumatic event. This is uh, an elective event. The healing is much better in young children than it is in adults, and it's a very, very different type of injury. that she's obviously chilled and about to fall asleep and just yeah really confident that it went well. The thought of seeing them do it scared me um, but the reality of it I think was a lot less scary than, than the thought of it and again he, he forgot about it straight away. Provided all that's gone sort of smoothly you straight into the boots and bars full time 23 hours a day. So the foot abduction brace, or as some people call it, boots and bar, is uh, the brace that maintains the position of the feet after the correction phase. I like to um, compare this with a retainer after you've had your teeth straightened. This is exactly what the foot abduction brace is doing. It's maintaining the corrected position of the feet. And this is usually uh, boots attached to a bar on both feet. So I would, it would be normal for a baby to cry while you're doing this, especially the first few times. That foot's just been in plaster and it's a strange feeling and we'll settle her once we've got the boots on. So she's going to wear these for 23 hours a day yep. for 12 weeks yep. and then we're going to see her next week just to check on how she's getting on and then we'll see her again five weeks after that and then six weeks after that, and then she'll go into them just night times and naps. Okay. I think it's daunting knowing that your child's going to be in the foot abduction brace until five years of age. However, there are some top tips that will really help with, uh, with making that become reality. Be positive. If children pick up that their parents are less than enthusiastic about the foot abduction brace, uh, it's going to be a much more difficult sell. So being positive about the brace as parents is really going to help. I'd say now, just having the boots and bars on is normal for him. Yeah. I mean, even for her, is normal. But it's definitely a part of his bedtime routine. Like, totally. That's yeah. the only way he knows his bedtime is if the boots come out. Yeah, well done, mate. And it kind of helps with the routine, when like a bedtime routine. You know, it's boots time, he knows it's bedtime. So it's quite good for us. <laughs> If somebody asked me if it was worth all the work and the surgery, I'd say it, totally, yeah, 150%. He's just a happy little lad. He's got no problems. He's off. If there's any advice I could give, like for me personally, um, is don't worry too much 
But I would say do your research and lots of it. Like yeah. Steps Charity yeah, was exactly, amazing yeah. for me. They had everything there and they help you get through it.